my name is Sarah and I am going to talk to you today about reading the Bible and I'm going to talk about it because I love doing that. I love reading the Bible. It's kind of my jam. Um, I went to seminary at Nowhere. I'm actually a third grade teacher. I just really like the Bible and I've found that it's a joy and a treasure and I'm going to talk to you about it. I also know a lot about teaching fractions and children's literature if you're interested in those topics. But I have heard other people talk about how for them the experience is different, that they think the Bible is boring or they think the Bible is confusing or they just feel like it's a chore they have to check off, like emptying the dishwasher. So I am going to share a little bit about how I think about it and how I've experienced it and maybe it'll interest you. First. Um, I think the Bible is a book that leads you to discover God, not a book that leads you to discover yourself. And so when you read the Bible and expect to find information about yourself or things that will help you right now, it's about me. And you're going to be frustrated because the Bible is a book that primarily leads you to discover the truth about God. When you read it like that, it doesn't disappoint you. Now, I think when you do it, you find what countless Christians have found for the last thousands of years, which that in discovering the truth about God, we find the truth about us. In discovering that God is love, we realize that we are loved. But the process starts with understanding that the Bible is a book that helps you discover God and who he is. So another thing I consider is getting the mail, which I really don't do. I do it in December when you all send us your Christmas cards because I like opening them and seeing your family pictures. And then I pretty much don't get the mail till the next year at Thanksgiving. So my husband really gets the mail. But theoretically, let's say you check your mail and there's a letter in there and without reading the address, without reading the return address, checking the stamp, the postmark, you open it. It's a couple pages long. You go to the second page and you read the third paragraph and you set the letter down and you're frustrated because it didn't make sense. You don't really understand the intention or the ideas that were trying to be communicated. Well, you see that that process makes no sense, that there was tons of information you just skipped it's ineffective and it's really frustrating and might feel like a waste of your time. But I would argue that's kind of how we come at the Bible sometimes because the Bible is not really a book. The Bible is over 60 books and they're all different genres. So when we pick up a regular book, we read a poetry book different than we read a history book, different than we read a theology book. So when you go to read a book of the Bible, you have to take the time to read the envelope to know the genre of what you're reading and approach it like that. You want to take the time to know who wrote the book. The person matters, the author, their background, where they came from, the intended reader, who was it for, who was listening to it. All this information is available to you. The historical context, what was going on in the world at the time. Now, some Bibles have this, like right at the beginning of a book, say you're starting First Peter, it'll all be there. Another great, easy, free thing is esv.org, those letters has a background for every book. It gives you a timeline, tells you who wrote it, when it was written, who it was written to, the main themes, and um, a setting and a map. So taking those couple minutes to read the envelope, to know what book you're reading, and then stick with the book is going to really make your Bible reading make a lot more sense and feel a lot more significant and understandable. In order to read the Bible, you need a lot of very fancy and expensive tools. You need a Bible available wherever books are sold or show up to church and we'll give you one. And you need a journal available at the Dollar Tree. And the reason for that is that you don't need a bunch of commentaries. You are capable of reading the Bible yourself and hearing from God. And having a journal after you finish your Bible reading for the day lets you write just a couple sentences about what you read. What did that show you about God? Because remember, the Bible is a book to discover the truth about God. And when you finish your section, write down what that showed you about God. And then you can add the second step of what did that, what I just read, what did that show me about myself or humanity? Because there's so much wisdom in the Bible about humans and how we interact and what makes us tick and what behaviors lead to what outcomes as God interacts with us. So I have notebooks full of this without commentaries in my library. I just have notebooks where I've read a book of the Bible and every day stopped to write, what did I learn about God from this? And what do I see about humans and how we relate to God or each other from this reading? 
So it doesn't take very long and it costs about $1.08 when you factor in the tax on your Dollar Tree notebook. The other thing is, like I said, it doesn't take a long time. It makes me think about when I was a camp counselor. I used to be a camp counselor at the Y and we would have a couple days each summer where it was like 95 degrees and I was sure the kids were gonna dehydrate. And I was nervous all day long and watching them and their skin colors and pumping them full of water. And dehydration is terrifying. And when you are working with someone who is actually dehydrated, the temptation is to give them a 32 ounce Nalgene of ice water because they're thirsty, let's get them water. But if you take an actually dehydrated person to the hospital, the real medical professionals will put them on an IV drip because they know that the healthiest way to bring that person back to a stable place is a little bit at a time. And that's how it works with Bible reading. Bible reading is an IV drip if you want to get to a healthy place. It's a little bit every day. And the consistency of a little bit every day is what moves your Bible reading time from a chore to a joy. I don't know the psychology on that. I just know it works. If every month you sit down for five hours and read a ton of Bible and pray and journal and think that's, that's good, but that's not going to give you the kind of joy and consistency and stability in your um, experience with the Bible as just doing a little bit every day. And it fits in a lot of places when it's just a little bit. I read my Bible and journal while I drink my morning cup of coffee. I know people who read their Bible and journal right before bed. I know people who listen to the Bible audibly in their car on their drive to work. And if you leave five minutes earlier, you can park in your parking lot, pull your $1 notebook out of your glove compartment, write down what you just found out about God and what you just found out about humans. Um, you can work it in at a lunch break if that's something that you have in your job, but to build it as a habit, as an IV drip, slow and steady over time, puts the word of God into your heart and your mind and it becomes part of you and your habits and your rhythms. The last thing about Bible reading that makes it a unique reading experience is that everything you read in the Bible falls under the meta narrative of the Bible, of the grand story of scripture, which is the creation, the fall, the rescue, and the eventual redemption. And this is in the big story. This is God creates the world. Humanity chooses not to follow God with our actions and our hearts. Jesus comes in to rescue, is killed, is resurrected, and is redeeming everything and making us all new. And then when you read the Bible and you read the history books and you read the prophecy books and you read the poetry books, you see how these littler stories fit into that meta narrative. And if you don't consider it like that, you can miss things. Think about King David, right? If we don't think about it in the meta narrative, you can risk making King David like a Sunday school version of a Marvel superhero. You know, like Steve Rogers, dweeby little guy, and then he becomes Captain America. David, this little shepherd boy who defeats Goliath. If you actually read the biography of David, not his work in the Psalms, but the story of his life, which is in the history books of the Old Testament, you see the meta narrative, the fall, I and mean, the things David did are horrifying. And if you think your family is dysfunctional, his was worse. And, and then the rescue, David talks about God didn't leave him. God pulls him up and then the redemption of God still allowing David to follow him and to worship him and to rebuild and let beautiful things still come from the disasters. That, that shows the life of David with the meta narrative of scripture. So that's a unique thing about reading the Bible that's different from other books. And then I saved the last thing for the end of the video because I thought maybe you wouldn't watch the whole thing because this is the part I'm not very good at. But reading the Bible is different from reading other books because it's not a textbook. It's a way that a living God communicates to us. So you, I feel like it's so important when you finish your Bible reading to take a couple minutes and pray and listen and let the Holy Spirit speak to you through what you just read. That's the last component that makes it different. But still, we're talking about a reading, a quick writing, and a prayer and listening time. Slow and steady because consistent is what moves it from a chore to a joy. Um, and tomorrow, so tonight before I go to bed, I usually pick up our living room so I'm not tempted to do it in the morning and I preset my coffee. And tomorrow morning I will come down and turn it on and read my Bible.
because that's how I start my day and I found that it makes my life better in every way. I also don't wanna be an idea pirate, fancy word is plagiarism. A lot of these ideas came from my life and my experience, but I also really appreciate the teachings from a Bible teacher named Jen Wilkin, who's a great author and wrote a book called um, Women of the Word, How to Study the Bible with Both Our Hearts and Our Minds, which is perfectly applicable for men and women, if you're interested but I have appreciated her teaching and her Bible studies in my life. And I hope that you enjoy your time in the Bible. Thanks for listening.